Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marlene. Today's video is going to be about monk mode from a personal improvement perspective. It's also known uh, as the hermit mode or the sage from like the psychologist Carl Jung, um, the archetypes, and can also be considered like in the hiatus where you take a pause or a break from like work or something. This monk mode is pretty much a period where you take uh, time to reflect, to gain self-control, self-improvement, or basically have a stronger comeback. This pause or break is similar to what a monk does to achieve spiritual discipline in which they go to the mountain to isolate and just dedicate themselves to spiritual practices. mode is achieved by closing all distractions from the path that is closing all the doors of perspectives that are going to distract you from the best path the more this world we get to live in brings us so many distractions and new things every day so this path is like the one where you have the most um, probability of success where you're going to learn like new skills and new things it all starts by closing all the doors so you can become a sage or the hermit and you'll learn to become wiser to prioritize what is important to you you learn to value yourself and others this monk mode i've seen it like in channels uh, here in youtube where it's usually led by men who part ask others to participate in challenges of going on monk mode for like three, six months or like disappear completely and transform your life in six months. So everybody has their own way of doing it. Some go because they want to be like better than any somebody else or <laughs> how to get ahead of themselves or other people. So it's nothing new. This is more like my way to see it, my advice um, or like strategy. Because monk mode is like a strategy because it's, it makes you advance a little bit more faster or like in general than other people. When you're on this self-improvement journey, you're not really um, against others. It's more against yourself. Um, but when you're in this monk mode, you notice that you're kind of moving faster than others. And it's kind of like you look back at others and it's like um, you kind of see that you have a advantage somehow it's like your energy is a little bit more predominant than somebody else that hasn't done the work so by having this focused mind this like um narrow minded into something is it allows you to like remove other things from your consciousness so that you only become like very productive where productive means just how to Go from point A to from B in the most efficient way without you like burning out. So this time is for you to like dedicate it um, just by yourself, right? To improve yourself. If you live with others, it might be a little bit harder, like because again, they might like not understand um, what your goal is. But as long as you find that time to be alone, not to the detriment to your mental health at some time that you're able to do, I don't know, in the morning or at night, um, just to do this monk mode. Um, when I did monk mode, um, I didn't know it was called monk mode, <laughs> but um, for me, this period lasted like about six months. Um, I didn't realize it was going to be this long because at first I thought it was going to be like a month long. But for me, how I did it was um, I wanted to be like a minimalist. Like I didn't want to have a lot of things at home because I felt overwhelmed. And my family has like tendencies to accumulate. <laughs> and I just didn't like like the overall look of my my house. So I started decluttering, decluttering purifying spaces. And I found out about minimalism. And in six months, I was able to purge like belongings and including my digital space like social media and there was a time when like right before the pandemic so 
I did feel like I was missing out on events, like parties, not going out, not doing the same things because I was so focused on trying to be a minimalist, which later on a lot of people started doing that with the pandemic. Um, but it took a lot of time because I had to sell, I had to give away, I had to throw a lot of items. And during that time, I even reflected on like decluttering, like friendships, even good friendships where they were a little bit codependent um, emotionally on me. Like they didn't let me um, be alone. Like they want, they understand the importance of me wanting to have solitude and to prioritize myself and what I wanted to do. And this was a time when I actually learned about like setting energetic boundaries with others. And like, I always respected their boundaries. So like, I like respect my, you know, so I learned a lot during that time um, without even thinking about it. And paradoxically, um, I find it funny that a lot of my relationships actually improved during this monk mode because I got to know myself and my relationship with God um, became like closer so I guess in a way like I was able to become a better person and understand others so I could be like a better friend so now this monk mode you can see it as metaphorically or physically like locking yourself in the room where you close yourself to the world and you just focus on yourself with one goal in mind. And men usually talk about this more like this than women. They do it, address it like more like um, self-care, like type of way. But either way, um, some of those uh, monk modes I've seen is because they want to stop like scrolling down uncontrollably on their phone, stop watching like corn. And instead, they want to like meditate or exercise more or eat certain foods, like improve, I guess, their nutrition and the hopes that during this process is going to manifest um, like they actually mean to change their lives, you know, like they put meaning into their lives, not just like going through life without no meaning. So. This is going to mean to break other bad habits, you know, breaking out with like, I don't know, like um, instant dopamine, like sugar, social media, and kind of like regenerating your nervous system. Determination, this energy that you put at first is going to be very difficult at first since you're not used to it and you have like no idea where it's going to take you. But it's like you have to stop everything around you and just with no distractions um, so like nothing takes you off your track, you know, and you're going to put all this like energetic barriers and it's going to be difficult at first, but you're going to be able to do it. Um, because all that energy that you're spreading out is only going to go to that goal and you're going to see like how far you're able to take it and the changes you can do it like at extreme everybody has their own way again but for me it works to be a little bit more like stream like it works for me to for example cut cut out all distractions like social media and all sort of things like I'm a minimalist almost to the extreme but not not quite there yet but you can do it your own way um for example if you have issues with money you could like try not to spend as much things like that during that time um for example Back in the days when I had Snapchat, I used to spend the whole day there um, sending messages. And unconsciously, I was comparing myself to other people. And, like, I wanted to be other uh, other people's, I don't know, like, lives. And for me, Snapchat is one of those apps, like, the most toxic ones, where it's, like, sending photos that are instantly where you're, like, always feeling like anxious or desperation like if you miss out on this photo on this event or my score is going to go down if I don't like send this message or things like that so for me um, when I started to go into minimalism and trying to get rid of even this app um, I started feeling a lot of anxiety and like I have feelings of not belonging or not obviously because I was trying to get rid of it but um, because that's how I connected with my friends. But 
when I did it, it's like this period taught me to say no, to value my solitude and to be able to manage like my time more efficiently and to actually put more energy into my mental health, my physical health and prioritize what really was important to me. The idea of the smoke mode is like to take everything out of your life like a detox and you realize how you really don't need nothing like a lot of things are just a distraction because you're trying to find how to maybe cope with a limited belief with some emotional thing that you don't understand. Going fully into mug mode, you change, like depending how long you do this. Um, let's say you're on this for like a year. <laughs> but um, when you look back, from where you started, like, it's almost like a different person, right? Like, it obviously depends, but let's say if you see yourself from, like, when I was 15, now I'm 31, right? I don't recognize at all, like, the person that was me at 15. Um, and I don't even look the same. Like, I look obviously me, but um, I remember I had, like, anxiety. I, like, got bored and all the time and now it's like all my new habits have taken over like I never get bored like this is um my new life where I have meaning to everything that I do like my time spent wisely and um obviously I'm just comparing myself to myself right I will say like this time or like this detox um, gave me a lot of clarity on what I wanted to do with my life and I found my purpose and who I am now and just gave me clarity that I couldn't find like anywhere else like nobody else would have been able to give me that sense of I guess like freedom I was looking for um because again I was like so focused on I guess changing that through my life I always try to improve different areas I still do consider myself like minimalist minimalist <laughs> um like even on my free time I always try to like organize clean um because it still helps me and it's something that I took from that six months where I was like laser focused on being a minimalist right my monk move for minimalism so now I dedicate myself to continue this mug mode, but different way, like gaining knowledge um, and just like the way I eat, what I do with my time, um, the people I relate to. Uh, it's kind of like my new default mode and obviously everybody can do it their own way because you don't want to be by yourself that long because it could be like over time maybe could cause you to get depression because you're by yourself too long but for me it's like I was always with people all my life so this time it's actually like I have periods you know I still talk to people but still like I value more being alone than <laughs> being with other people and I found myself to be more congruent with my philosophy of life and what I want for my life um, I have achieved a lot of skills to be able to be alone and in complete freedom to do what I want. Um, I know how to manage my time, say no to distractions, um, and like meditate. And I feel more in a state of flow, creating and like arranging my life so that my life can keep me in this goal that I want to of self-improvement. Um, and I even thank myself, my past self, and I have respect for my past self for putting all this energy and putting all my life so that I can have a better future, you know, and you can do this too, whether you want a better future economically, physically, spiritually, it's all depends. Um, but this desire to have to change, to improve, to have a better future for yourself is going to overpower any other desire of yourself or not um 
for like now I wanted to break the other bad habits, you know, like you are going to have so much motivation that you don't want to go back to that old life, right? Um, it's pretty like, a, again, like this energy that once you set it in motion, it's like after it's going to be hard to take off, but once you're going up there or like moving forward, it's going to be like really hard to stop. Like it's going to take the same energy to stop it than it was from how to uh, from the beginning, right? So, yeah, and it's, it's like, I guess, surprising or like um, nice to see like back and see how much you have improved, you know? It's, it's periods of time, so it depends on your goals. For me, like that time, it was like necessary. Like I didn't even have a, any other choice. <laughs> um, but you can do it maybe to, again, maybe um, graduate from college or like having more like a fit body or building a certain habit, you know, routine like for six months that now eventually you do it like a second nature without even thinking about it. It all depends on what you want, what you can achieve. And if you're able, it's kind of like testing yourself if you're capable like in this testing time like you really get to know who you are and what you're capable of like you get to know if you're really into it <laughs> and once you like get ahead of people then you don't even like um explain to them like who you are now and they even start to ask like um how you managed to do all this or like they see it kind of like a trick, you know, like you're a magician and you show them the, the trick, but they don't see all the work behind it. Um, they just see like the last result. So I think it's cool, you know, it's kind of like you're impressing others, but um, it takes practice, right? It's not just about saying, it's about like doing it and practicing and maybe even failing at first, but then trying to get back at it. Um so, yeah, I think that's all I have for today about monk mode. And I hope you guys um, feel encouraged to maybe go through a period like that. Um, it helps out a lot, I will say, more than anything. So, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so, thank you so much for watching. Bye.